Hey everyone, this is Nick LaRue from Film Sobri. I'm here at the Oxford Film Festival here in Oxford, Mississippi, and I am here today with the opening night film uh, director and writer, producer, writer, producer, yeah. producer yes, yeah, of <laughs> Coast Light, um, which we screened last night, which you know, we're in the morning now, so I'm still a little, uh, a little out of it. So why don't you introduce yourselves to the folks? Well, I'm John Stimson. I'm the uh, director and co-writer of Ghost Light, and uh, we're from uh, we're a Massachusetts filmmaking team, and uh, this is my partner in crime here. <laughs> I'm uh, Jeff Taylor, uh, co-writer with John and producer of the film, and um, yeah, we're from Massachusetts and uh, made the movie in Massachusetts, and, and happy to have done that and be here. Fantastic. As a fellow masshole, <laughs> uh, so I uh, I was actually really keen to see uh, first of all foliage that I recognized, um, and also uh, what are some of the advantages you guys find of actually making films in Massachusetts? Because most of the time when you hear people like well, they made a movie in Massachusetts, it was like Argo in Boston or something like that, or you know like the Jake LaMotta story, you know, or something like that over in you know one of the. Dorchester or something like that. So, um, what are some of the advantages you folks have found of like filming in Massachusetts? Well, I've sort of made my career making movies in Massachusetts. I've done fifteen of them now, and um, and it's it's a it's home. It's home for us. It's it's great to be able to to work and and uh, and and hire and and build um, alliances and and have a crew base of people that we we trust and and work with time and time again. Uh, and, and bring up new people in the business, new kids that are coming out of film school or whatever and want a job. And the film tax credit in Massachusetts is fa fantastic. It's um, It's been in place now for, uh, I don't know, 12 years or so, and, and it's really starting to take hold. And there's a lot, a lot of work, a lot of films coming to Massachusetts, but then a lot more filmmakers like ourselves who are, are sticking around and, and making Massachusetts our, our home and our place of work. And, so it's really rewarding, and and there was a, it was this was kind of a no brainer because the story takes place in the Berkshires. Um, so we uh, you know we did not shoot in the Berkshires. We shot in uh, in Concord and Groton, Massachusetts, which uh, you know doubled for the Berkshires just to stay closer to the the, the the folks and not have to put everybody up and save save a little money. But um, but yeah, no Massachusetts is is a beautiful place, and and we call it home, and and love to love to stay there and work there. Fantastic. So speaking to the, the writing of the script, um, and I'm going to go over to you, Jeff, uh, for uh, to talk a little bit about working uh, collaboratively in terms of getting a script written, especially for something like this that is fairly an ensemble kind of macabre comedy. Um, and uh, what what are some of the challenges both in writing characters, make sure kind of everyone gets their their their, their moment in the sun, and also getting you know the, the, the point across of the of the film itself and make sure each of you guys are on the same page. Right. Well, John and I, I think, have a really good collaborative uh, uh, way of doing things. Uh, the story was definitely, we evolved it together. John had the original thought about this whole idea of, uh, of doing something with the Scottish play and uh, the superstitions in the theater because he comes out of that world. But then when we started working on this particular story, we just beat this. We just said, you know, counted how many actors were in the play and how many characters we'd need, quite frankly, and then backed out of it that way. Then created the story. Um, I, when I write, really, if I know the last scene, I'm really confident that I can get there, you know. And and John and I figured that out and knew where we were going. Mm -hmm. And then we just literally uh, just just slog through it went relatively quickly, it's beat by beat. They change, the beats change, but we knew the beat. And then we, he started at the end, I started at the beginning, and we kind of, uh, you know, marched through it. And, and found, we, you know, we don't sit and we do sit at some point when we're refining and really work on, you know, oh, I don't like that, get rid of that comma and that kind of stuff. But, uh, but we also have uh, separate time. So yeah. Um, we're gonna. I'm definitely gonna address the, the cast that you folks have in that uh, that film because it's it's a very dynamic and, and well-rounded cast. Uh, it includes Carol Kane, Roger Bart, Shannon Sossaman. My question, uh, though, actually comes about um, when you're actually uh, on set and they're going through the script, they're going through the lines. How often and how stern are you folks when it comes to improv? Considering a lot of them come from that background. Yeah. Well, I'll start at them, John. Um, well, it's funny. Different actors are, uh, 
have different ways of doing that. Um, some of our actors just would do the lines. They'd make a word or two choice. Others would, I'm not sure I could say that. I mean, there were those moments. But basically, um, you have to go at the moment. And if, a char- if an actor is creating a character effectively, they should have a pretty good idea of what that character is doing. You know, it's, and, and I think our script... I think our script worked in a lot of ways, not to speak highly of our own work, but uh, because it gave them the opportunity to go into a scene, play with the other actors, because there was a lot of ensemble, and then say, you know, I, you know, and they they were really good. Now let me jo- I'll let John talk about that because it's fun. And the beauty of hiring really talented, very veteran actors like we were lucky enough to be able to do is that they bring so much to it. I mean. Carol Kane, for example, came in and she had this idea that her character sort of, you know, was a was British for the, you know, that didn't that didn't occur to me, but she, that she had a, 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 this Betty Davis sort of a way about her with heavy makeup, and she's sort of a, a you know, a, a diva that that had been in the theater for, you know, many, as a veteran for many many years, and she so she brought so much to it. Scott Adsit, for example, you know, he's just such a funny guy and so sharp and so quick on his feet and he was able to, to dig into a, you know what was a, a supporting role really as this he plays the stage manager but you know little things that as an actor looks at their character specifically you know we look at the whole they look at it their, at their role specifically and and they can bring nuances and funny little things and Scott is so quick with that and you know for instance he um, he gets offered the the, uh, the second witch at one point because you know they need to they need somebody to play that part and he's like and he and, and, and we didn't even think of this but he said to me I like this idea. I'm going to play this up. I want to. I, I'm looking forward to playing the second witch. I said, "Well, look, oh, that's wonderful." So he had this just this this little layer that he put on top of what was otherwise just sort of a mundane moment in the story. So it, you got to be open to that, and it's such a collaborative medium. And and actors are so are so wonderful in in uh, particularly when they've had experiences like like ours all did that they just bring so much. And if you're open to that kind of uh, suggestion, I think you can make it even better and and it doesn't it, it it's it's part of the process so um yeah a big part of ghost light is the as you guys already mentioned the superstitions of the stage are there any superstitions of uh filmmaking that you folks observed during the making of the film uh you know even even jokingly or otherwise <laughs> Superstitions of filmmaking. Oh. That's a tricky one. I mean, we certainly were um, were wary of and sensitive to the territory we were treading on with the Scottish play, uh, and and several actors you know, mentioned that they were concerned about that going in, and and we probably stirred things up by by. Uh, <laughs> Poking the, 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 the bear a little, because uh, you know, things didn't always go right. You know, we we were in a barn. It smelled. The cows were, you know, the, the manure was right below us, and if the wind was right, it was cold. It was, you know, there were obviously there's stuff that, and you know, always you you, you kind of roll with it on a on a short, uh, you know, small film like this. I mean, we shot this in 20 days, so um, <clears throat> so I, you know, in terms of superstitions of filmmaking, it's more the traditions of filmmaking. I think that. You, you, you adhere to in, in terms of um, you know trying to stay on budget trying to stay on time you know 12 hour days keeping your you know keeping the, avoiding overtime if you can breaking for lunch at the right moment and, you know all the all the good stuff that, that goes with um, with uh, you know uh, making a, a responsible movie and, and working with people and treating them well and uh, and, and that's that's a big part of the way we like to work so so you folks are on the uh, you're on the festival circuit right now. You're here at the Oxford <laughs> Film Festival here in Mississippi. Um, our, this is obviously not your first kind of go around film wise. Uh, is, is there anything that you folks want to make sure that you do special when you're promoting films that you could give even advice to other independent filmmakers? Like, hey, when you go to a film festival, maybe consider X, Y, Z. You know, even if one of those things is like, hey, make sure that your film, if it's on a file or a hard drive or DCP, make sure it works before the film, you know, things like that. Do you, do you have any advice to some of the people that maybe this is their first go around mm-hmm. that might be listening to this? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think uh, I think you're right. Technically, you want it to play well. Um, there's so, so many things about a film festival that are out of your control. Uh, when it plays, 
um, you know, where it plays, all those things. Can, uh, and I'm still an advocate, and if you see something that you kind of go, oh, I don't know if that's good, the best for us, I, be a squeaky wheel. I would say always say be a squeaky wheel. You may not be able to do it, but with a little sugar, trying to say, you know, is there any way we could be this or that? And it, you have to be always your own sales. You know, the film festival, you're there. They tee it up for you, but you got to do the work. And, and so you can't go in and say, well, I'm in a film festival. And then, so I just say every every minute that you're there and before you're there, just work, 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 and whatever that means. So to maximize, basically the audience, maximize getting your your movie in people's awareness. That's fantastic. Yeah. And be available to folks like yourself and and take advantage of the opportunity to talk to to local press, to to people like you that are doing uh, blogs and other things, and um, and 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 reach out ahead of time. Like Jeff was saying, I mean, we—you have to be your—you have to be your own advocate. You have to promote your film. You have to. So, you know, we reached out to influencers in the area before we came here. We tried to really get out onto Facebook and Instagram and and promote the fact that we were going to be the opening night screening at at the Oxford Film Festival, hashtagging everybody, connecting as much as we could to really get the word out, so uh, we could we could make the most of being here and and then to meet the other filmmakers. You know, that's yeah. a, that's a great opportunity. You know, just in making connections and sharing more stories and, and potentially, you know, people that you might collaborate with down the road. So it, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, and it, it, but it, it does take work. It really does take work. Yeah, you bring up online promotion. Um, my, I guess my next and probably final question before they put the, 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 the light on me, so to speak, <laughs> uh, is uh, where can people go and find a little bit more information about those like <laughs> online? You already mentioned, I think, like Facebook and Instagram and mm-hmm, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the best place to look is ghostlightmovie.com. That's our website. We keep it up to date. We've got all our upcoming screenings going on there, and you know our, our future um, rollout. You know trailer. the, the trailers up there. There's you know stories about all the actors and all. You know so uh, it, it's a, that's a great place to find information. Probably the best place. But we are we are out there uh, actively on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and and all the rest of them too. But um, yeah. ghostlightmovie.com. Yeah. Well. Uh, thank you, folks, for coming on over and, and to, uh, chatting with us. Really appreciate it. I'd say good luck for the rest of us. Well, I guess the pressure is off now. You've totally. got the opening <laughs> night jitters out, not only because it was opening night, but you were also the opening night film. So I guess now it's just Miller time, right? Yeah. As they say. So, uh, so I guess from one uh, you know, Massachusetts guy to another, hit the packy, smoke them if you got them, and uh, you know, don't forget where you packed a cap. And go so, Pats! Yeah, go Pats. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thanks a bunch, guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you.